Hi there and welcome. This is Jennifer and I am so glad you're here today. Today I will be sharing with you a really fun technique with alcohol inks that I call background alcohol ink lifting. This is a really fun way to get new looks from your alcohol inks and your background stamps. In fact, you could use this with regular stamps too if you wanted. I will first start out by showing you a bunch of backgrounds created with this technique, including the new alcohol ink products that are out. And then I will share some tips from turning a lot of these different types of backgrounds into cards. So let's first start out by creating our backgrounds. I will be using the new colors of Tim Holtz alcohol inks today. If you have the older colors of alcohol inks or the alcohol ink pearls, you could definitely use those. The reason I chose to use the new colors is they're bold and intense. And for today's technique, I feel that makes a bigger impact. So here's a quick look at the new colors. I'm just going to show them to you briefly. We have Glacier, Rosewood, Gumball, Laguna, Sienna, Mojito, which is a great Kelly Green, Everglades, Monsoon, Ember, which is like a per, uh, persimmon kind of color, Dijon, Cobalt, which is my favorite, Moss, Vineyard, Boysenberry, and Fiesta. And I'll use a bunch of these colors today. But again, if you have other alcohol inks, you could definitely use those. Now I will be doing a more complete video on the new alcohol ink products along with the alloys very soon. These new alloys are different than the metallic mixatives that you've seen me use in videos in the past. These create these really cool metallic highlights. It kind of looks like leafing. But again, my next video will go into this. I just wanted to let you know that was coming in case anybody had questions. Today, I'm just going to focus on using the alcohol inks, although I do use an alloy on one of my examples. Whenever I use alcohol links in today's video, I will be using Yupo paper. I'm using the Tim Holtz Yupo paper from Ranger, which now comes in bigger sheets if you prefer that. But I'll be using the five by seven today, along with some of those pieces cut in half. I will also be using rubbing alcohol along with a little dropper. And I will be using the Ranger Tim Holtz alcohol blending solution. I use these in different times and you'll see that in today's video. I will also be working on my Tim Holtz glass media mat. That's a surface that you see here that's black with a white grid. The reason I'm using that is it's really easy to clean alcohol ink up off of this surface so I don't have to worry about staining. Today I will also be using the new alcohol ink air blower. Now I'm really excited about this tool because I had tried other blowers in the past when using alcohol ink and I never liked any of them. I didn't think they were easy to use and I didn't feel like I had enough control. But the size of this and the ease of squeezing it is perfect for this purpose. So you'll be seeing me do this today. Okay, enough of the beginning information. Let's start creating some backgrounds for this technique. I have a piece of Yupo paper and I'm grabbing some rubbing alcohol with my little dropper here and kind of spreading it out on the background, just a light layer of it. I then am going to start adding some of the new colors and I'll put the colors up in the corner so you know what I'm using. I'm putting a few drops down and then in this one example, I do use one alloy. I use the mind color, which is kind of a rose gold. You'll be able to see that on the background, but I decided not to use it on any of my other projects today. What I'm trying to do at the beginning of this process is put down as much color as I can. I feel like the background alcohol ink lifting technique works better if you put down more color. That's one of the reasons I chose the new colors because they are more intense. Okay, after I put down some color, now I'm going and putting a couple drops of the blending solution on top of the areas where I put the alloy and in just a few different spots on my background. Now I'm taking the air blower and I'm moving this color around and you can see how well it moves using this tool. It's very easy to squeeze also. In the past, I never liked using them because they were difficult. I used to use a straw and then I was always careful to breathe off to the side because you don't want to breathe in these fumes much, but this is the perfect solution for me. I finally found a tool that allows me to move this color around as if you were using a paintbrush on a painting. It really is easy to control. So you can see how I just keep directing the color to blend and I want to keep it intense in all the different areas. I really don't want too many light spots but it's nice to have that variation of color because that will show through in our final technique. 
Okay, so once I'm happy with how it looks, I like to lightly heat set it, not with a lot of heat. Really, I'm just trying to dry it. So I'm holding my heat gun away from it and moving it around a lot. I don't want to apply too much heat. I just want to kind of freeze it where it is and then let it dry completely on its own off to the side. While that dries, let's do another example. I'm using the same colors of ink, but this time I'm skipping the alloy. So I put down rubbing alcohol. Now I'm putting lots of drops of the color, and then I'm using the air blower to start getting the color moving. Then I can add more color in the places I need to. If I find I'm getting any areas where I don't really like how it's moving around, I just add a little bit of blending solution. But again, in this particular technique, I'm putting the color down pretty heavily. Normally I don't put down this much, but I want as much down as I can because it helps with the technique. Okay, here's a different version. This time I skipped the rubbing alcohol first, just so you could see how it moves differently. So the colors are kind of stuck there until we add blending solution. So I added a few colors there. Now I'm putting a bunch of blending solution on top. I can use my little air blower to move the color around and look at just like that. We have a very quick, bold background. And by the way, you'll see what these look like when they're completely dry when we go to do our next step. In this next example, I'm going to mix a few different colors together, and I'm going to try to get some bold areas of color, um, a little bit of variety on my background. The reason is I feel like this ink lifting technique that we're going to do looks cool if you have different areas of color. Another great thing about this technique is say you create a background and you're not thrilled with the results and you're thinking you want to throw it away or give up, don't you can change the look of your background, kind of save the day by doing the rest of the technique. So here, I wasn't really thrilled with this background, but just wait, this ends up turning out to be one of the best backgrounds after we do the next step. So I continue to make a bunch of backgrounds, all bold colors of alcohol inks. You then want to make sure all the backgrounds are completely dry before you move on to the next step. You could just set them aside to dry for a bit or add a little bit of heat with your heat gun. But the next step we're going to do heat embossing on top of this, and yes, you can heat emboss on Yupo. So let's start making some of our fun backgrounds. So for my first example, I'm using the Pink Fresh Studio Enchanted Blooms background stamp. Uh, Pink Fresh Studio just came out with a bunch of background stamps at the Creativation Show, and I was really excited about them and glad to finally get to use them. This is key for this technique. You want to use your anti-static powder bag or tool very generously on the background. Anywhere there's heavy amounts of alcohol ink, embossing powder will want to stick to it. So by using the anti-static powder bag first, you can prevent that. I then inked up my stamp with Versamark ink and I'm stamping right on top. You won't be able to see it well, but that's okay. I'm now adding Hero Arts clear embossing powder. Now normally I just tap it to knock off the excess powder, but in this case, I went over my trash can and really flicked it hard from behind to make sure I knocked off all of the extra powder from the alcohol ink background. You only want the powder to stick where your stamping is. And trust me, that's all it took. The anti-static powder bag, a firm flick on the back of it, and I end up with a really crisp result. Now it's time to do a little bit of magic to make that background image appear. There are many ways to do alcohol ink lifting, many, but this one was fun because it's super fast and you end up with another inky background to use on another card. For this, I use a die cut machine and I prefer to use a manual machine because it gets kind of messy, but that's okay, it'll clean up nicely in the end. I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cut machine. This is a great machine. And I have my two cutting plates like I normally would do for die cutting. I'm putting down my alcohol ink background that has the clear heat embossed image on it. Next, I have a mini mister from Ranger that has rubbing alcohol in it. Don't put blending solution or alcohol ink in there. That's not safe to do, but you can use rubbing alcohol. I'm going to take this rubbing alcohol and mist it pretty generously over this background. You'll see it start to move the alcohol ink. I'm then quickly placing a piece of regular white cardstock, just any kind of white cardstock down on top. Then I'm running it through my machine and I go back and forth through the machine and all it's doing is applying pressure. It's not die cutting anything, just applying pressure. 
I then can pull them apart and check this out. It removes some of the ink onto this cardstock piece, which we'll talk about in a moment, but look at how our image appears. There's some mess around the edge, but that's okay. We'll trim that off and save those scraps for something else. But once you trim out the main area, you'll see how beautiful the image looks. And what's cool is the alcohol ink actually makes the embossed area not as shiny. So it looks kind of smooth and a little suede-like. It's just gorgeous. Definitely better than any kind of lifting technique I've done with watercolor or other things. So let's do another example. I have another Pink Fresh Studio background. This is that really bold one that I wasn't sure about. I generously use my anti-static powder bag. Now I'm inking up my stamp with Versamark ink and really putting some muscle into it. Then adding my clear embossing powder. Once I've covered it with the powder, I flick it very firmly from the back to knock off any of the excess. And then I heat emboss it. You won't be able to see the image a whole lot here, but now it's time to do the magic. I have my cutting plate down, put my background on it. I'll mist it a few times with the rubbing alcohol. You could paint it on the rubbing alcohol on if you prefer. You don't have to use the mist, but I find it works really well. Or you could do drops with a dropper if you wanted. I put a piece of white cardstock on top and then I run it through back and forth and it just applies a lot of pressure. If you don't want to use a die cut machine, you could use a brayer to really apply pressure over it, but I find this works better. And you can easily clean up your plates with an alcohol swab when you're done. So there you can see the background of the Yupo paper with the alcohol ink lifted off. And then check out this really cool background with the extra ink. And I'll be using both of these in card examples later on. Okay, here's another. I think the more you see, the better. This is the Lemon Lush stamp, which I really like. And this is the first background I did. You can see that alloy that I used in it. Can you see that shine in different areas? It's just so beautiful. And again, I'll talk about those in my upcoming video. I use lots of anti-static powder tool. I'm stamping with the stamp with Versamark ink. Add my clear embossing, knock off the excess, go ahead and heat set it, and now it's time for the magic once again. I place it on my cutting plate. I spray it a few times with my rubbing alcohol. Then I put on top a piece of cardstock and run that back and forth. I really like the extra inked piece of this one too. I think it turned out really cool. You can see the different colors there. It just is kind of got a little bit of a mixed media look to it. And then check this out with the alloy in the background too. So beautiful. So that's the Yupo piece. I found that the Pink Fresh Studio Abstract Cube background stamp worked really well for this technique. This is a great technique to just make a bunch of backgrounds with a bunch of different background stamps, put some of the things that you have to use, and you can experiment and find out what works best and gives the results that you like the most. So here I'm spraying with the uh, rubbing alcohol, adding a piece of cardstock, running it back and forth through. And by the way, I didn't clean up my plates as I went, but it was easy to clean later on. Now that time I realized I didn't spray it enough. So I'm going to spray it again, put another piece of cardstock down, and I really like the look after that. And by the way, I'll show you a close-up look at all the final pieces when we're done. I like how this Yupo piece ends up looking kind of watercolored, but with very little effort in the end. And the dark color is trapped under the heat embossing, and everything around it gets lighter. For my next example, I use the Diagonal Bars background stamp from Pink Fresh Studio, but I did want to show you that they also have the Do What You Love background stamp that you can stamp with it, or you could stamp these separately, or you can even cut out sentiments from a stamped background using the one on the right, but I just used the one on the left today. So I heat emboss that on my background. I've already done that off screen. And then this time, instead of putting white cardstock on it to press off the ink, I'm putting down a light pool colored cardstock. So you don't have to transfer to white, you could transfer onto colored cardstock if you wanted to. And it just gives a little bit more color to your background, totally up to you. But regardless, the Yupo paper will end up looking different because they were lifting some of that ink away. If you don't like the look of the extra piece of cardstock with the lifted ink on it, you could always just use scraps for that. Use up any of your scraps and then just use your inked up Yupo uh, piece for your project. Next, I'm using the Pink Fresh Studio Diamond Tiles. This is a beautiful background stamp and it worked really well for this technique. 
I did clear heat emboss it. Now I'm spraying it with the rubbing alcohol. And this time I'm putting a piece of Yupo paper on top instead of regular cardstock. This will be very different. Because the Yupo paper doesn't really absorb it because it's like a plastic paper, it's going to only take away some of the ink from our background. And you can see a lot more smooshed out the side and made more of a mess. So here you can see what you end up with, those two different backgrounds. But you can do it again. Spray this background again and then repeat the process. So you can actually make a few backgrounds out of one. Again, I'm putting down a piece of Yupo paper, running back and forth. Some of it will ooze out because neither of these papers are really absorbing the color. And you can see how I have another piece, another inked up piece. This one is definitely lighter because we had removed some of the color. But then I finally went through a third time and this time I use cardstock and you can see how I'm able to continue to lift off color. So if you're one of those who likes mixed media or really inky backgrounds, you can go to town with this technique. If you're one of those who likes cleaner looks, just cut out the section of the background that you like and you can end up with a really clean card design, which you'll see me do in this video. Let's first look at the backgrounds on the Yupo paper. So these are the ones that we started with with the alcohol ink and we lifted some of the color away. You'll see that like this one, I use a background stamp that I didn't show in the video, but I do link them all below in my description if you want to check them out. I went to town making a bunch of different backgrounds. Here's the one that has the alloy in it so you can see some of the metallic shine. You can see how this technique works really well no matter what the background look like with the alcohol ink to start with. So if you have a background you created and you weren't happy with it, just go ahead and try this technique. You might end up liking the results. And remember, we still have the extra pieces where we lifted ink off. So we have these pieces we can make cards with too, and I'll share some of those in today's video. Okay, now that we have a bunch of backgrounds, I thought we'd go ahead and make a bunch of cards. And I have some tips for using bold backgrounds like this and still coming up with a clean card design. For this card, I was able to add some simple die cutting and also some vellum, which really made a big impact on the card. This is the Pink Fresh Studio Leafy Branch die, which I use a couple times in today's video. I really like this one because it can be used for many styles of cards. I die cut this three times from white cardstock and glued them together for a stacked dimensional look. I then glued it on to some vellum. This is a pearlescent vellum. And after it was dry, I'm cutting around the leaves. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to try to get as close as you can to the edge of the leaves. It's definitely worth the effort in the end. I also do this technique later in this video again. In addition to this die cut on this card, I'll be using the Pink Fresh Studio Phrase Builder Sending Die Set. I've used this in videos before and I really like it because there are so many words included and you can do different messages. Also, in the die set you have the shadow die and the word die, which is definitely a perk. I use the prayer die to create a layered die cut. I die cut the shadow from white cardstock and the word prayers itself from purple glitter cardstock and glued them together. I've added that onto one of my backgrounds and I cut my leafy branch die cut in half so I could easily tuck the two halves behind the word. I found that was easier than trying to layer them up. This is a very simple design and by putting the vellum inside of the leaves we add some interest and don't uh, block off too much of our fun background. If you wanted to save time, you could leave the center of the leaves open or do die cut inlay with some solid colors of cardstock. Here's a closer look at the results that you get with that ink lifting background technique. It's really this great smooth looking background. And I also added some gemstones for a little bit of shine and just a little bit of interest. I also feel like using glitter paper for the word prayers helps to make it stand out on the card. Now the glitter paper that I used for that is from a new paper pad from Memory Box. They actually have a pastel one and then the brights. I'm using mostly brights today, but I use the pastels in an upcoming video. I just really like the different colors in here and I find that it die cuts beautifully and the glitter doesn't rub off. But you could definitely use any glitter paper that you may already have. Here's another card with the same design, but I used the word amazing this time instead. 
I again have the leafy branch die cut where I glued three of them together for dimension. I really feel like that helps to make it stand out against the busy background. I also put vellum on the back of that. And then this time I used blue glitter paper for the main word. And once again, I added some blue gemstones to the background. I like that this simple card design allows a lot of our inked background to show. By the way, that word amazing is from a different phrase builder die set from Pink Fresh Studio. This one is called you. So you can do you are amazing, you are wonderful, you are kind, and you are awesome. I just use the word amazing for today's card. And again, you've seen me use that in videos before. Okay, here is another example. This time I used a bunch of die cutting together with one of our backgrounds. This features the Pink Fresh Studio Frame Builders Botanical Oval Die Set. They have a similar design in a triangle, a circle, and a square, but the oval one happens to be my favorite and I use it on this card in the next. This card also features the Sentiment Sweet You die, so you have the word you and the shadow, and this is nice and large, so it really stands out on a card. So I have one of my Yupo backgrounds, and I have also the die cuts from the dies I just showed you. I die cut three of each, and then glued them on top of each other. So again, I have dimension, which allows these die cuts to stand out against the background. So I'm gluing these stacked die cuts onto my card. I'm not gluing down the word you, but I'm just holding it there to get the positioning of the other pieces just right. Now, once I've let that glue dry, I use some liquid adhesive. I'm going to take my scissors and cut around my die cut. So I'll only use what's inside of those die cuts and then arrange them on my card. I do have a lot of leftover pretty looking background there in the center, which I will save and use on an example that I make at the end of this video. For the background of this card, I wanted to add a little interest. So I used this older Pink Fresh Studio background die. Here's a little trick, by the way, if you have all of those pieces in your die, what I like to do is before removing the die cut, I use my We Are Memory Keepers weeding tool, which is super strong. And I can just rub it right across the back and it pops out all of those little pieces. Then when I take my die cut out, none of them are left behind. And this is a huge time saver. By the way, this tool also has a little piercer and a little scooper that you can press to come out of the tip. So you can use those too. Since I'm doing so much die cutting in today's video, I decided to use spray adhesive. I like to spray this in a box outside and then I bring the project in to glue together. I glued one of these white die cuts onto a white note card that's four and a quarter by five and a half, just so there's some texture on the background, but not too busy. Now I'm gluing my inked die cuts onto the corners of the card into the side as I had planned when I originally laid it out on the background. I then can cut all the extra away from the edges and I added a U die cut. So I cut the shadow for U from white. Then I die cut the word itself from blue glitter paper. I also stamped hello with blue ink and put that right above the word you so I have the message hello you. These particular dies were great for creating sections of those inked backgrounds. If you don't have anything like that, look at your circle dies or your window dies. You can use them creatively like this. Okay, now my next example uses that same botanical oval die that I used in my last one, but for a different card design. I again have a die cut glued to my background. And I also stamped You Are Amazing on a strip and added it right down the center of the card. Now I did off screen glue those oval botanical die cuts onto one of my inked backgrounds. And this time I have two halves that I'm going to glue above and below our stamp sentiment strip. For this card in the last, I didn't take the time to put vellum behind the openings on these die cuts. But because I stacked die cuts three tall, it helps to make it stand out against the busy background, kind of creates little shadows. I cut the excess from my sentiment strip that's across it, and I also added a few white pearls to the background. Using parts of a background inside of a die cut like this is a great way to only use parts of the background that you are happy with. So if you create an inked background, don't love the whole thing, just use the pieces that you do like and you can turn them into a nice card too. By the way, that sentiment is from the Pink Fresh Studio Abstract Builder stamp set, and that's what the hello was from the last card too. I'll show you that stamp set in a moment. Here's one more example, very similar design, but I did it at an angle, and this time I used the botanical circle die. 
So these come together to form a circle instead of an oval, but a very similar look. This time I decided to back all those openings with vellum. So it kind of hides some of the bold color. It's up to you whether you want to take the time to do that or leave them open. And here is that abstract builder stamp set that has lots of bold but small sentiments, including the sending hugs. And by the way, I know I'm going through these card examples pretty quickly and not showing all the steps. I really wanted the focus to be on the technique, but you can go to my blog, which I link below, if you want to see photos of all the cards and get a closer look. Okay, my next example, I had a pink background that I really liked, but I thought I wanted to add something to it. It was pretty simple. So I used the Pink Fresh Studio Modern Bloom die. This is one of my favorite dies. I die cut it, you guessed it, three times from white cardstock and glued them together, and then added it to one of our Yupo backgrounds with the diamond pattern. I then added a simple sentiment to the center. I didn't want to do much to this so that the color could show through. I did add soft snowball pearls from Lucy's cards, so you can see those on the die cut. In my sentiment, I used the inverted stitch scallop circle die set. This is a really cool die set because you could use the scallop circles alone to create windows, or you could create frames by using the solid circle die with it. I ended up using two of the dies together to create this frame, and I white heat embossed thinking of you in the center from this just a little lovely stamp set. So really what you're seeing me doing is going through all the dies and stamps that I've been wanting to use lately and putting them into use with my inked backgrounds. That's one of the fun things about doing inking background techniques is you can create a bunch and then use any products that you've had sitting around that you've been meaning to use all on these cards. Okay, next up is my favorite of the backgrounds. This one has all the different colors on it. I wanted to keep the card design simple and allow a lot of that background to show. So I actually used that same Modern Blooms die, that background one that I just showed you, but I cut out a floral section from it. So there are three die cuts glued together here, and once they dried, I'm just cutting out one of the flowers from it. I actually saved the rest and cut out another flower from it for another one of my cards later on in this video. I then glued this onto the vellum, like I showed you before, and then when it's dry, I'll cut around the edge. For the frame on the die, I used the Pretty Frames die set. This has two frame or two dies in the set, but that outside one actually cuts three individual frames, and I decided to use them together. So here's the card that I came up with. I have a white die cut frame around the edge. Then I have my floral piece with vellum behind it. I glued that onto my background added a simple stamp sentiment and some pearls, and we're good to go. I feel like the color and the pattern in the background really take this, this stage with this card design, and I wanna keep it that way. For the sentiments on all my cards today, I just like to go through my stamp sets and find what sentiment works best for the person I plan to send the card to. And I like that Pink Fresh Studio has a lot of sentiments filling in the areas on their stamp sets. So that a lot of them are unique and you can find just the right thing for your card. Now remember how I cut out one of those flowers for that last card? Well, I cut another flower from that same background for this card. I also used a Diagonal Stripes window die. And what I'm doing here is picking out the portion of the background that I like the best. So if you're not thrilled with the entire background, once again, you can just use the part you like. I really like this particular background. This is one of the cardstock backgrounds with the lifted ink. I just chose the area that I like the best and I'll trim that down and add it to the back of that white die cut. Now the flower die cut that I cut out was a little too intricate to put vellum on the back of. It would be tough to cut out. So this time I'm doing inlay with some red cardstock. So I, I added my white die cut to the card. Then I used the same background die to cut from the red cardstock, and I'm just gluing the pieces in like a puzzle. If I were to do this card again, I think I would have used a silver cardstock here instead. I didn't really like this cherry red cardstock, but hey, live and learn, and I think it turned out okay in the end. So there you can see the fun background showing through. And I use that abstract builder stamp set for the simple thank you message. Another way to use these backgrounds is with frame dies. This card was very quick to put together. I used the Pink Fresh Studio Foliage Frame Inset die. Die cut it three times from white cardstock and glued it together. 
and then I glued it onto one of my inked backgrounds. This is one of the backgrounds where we lifted the ink off the Yupo paper onto cardstock. I then added a simple sentiment strip to the middle and wanted to add some gemstones, but they didn't really show up well. So instead, I die cut little circles from one of those soft colored glitter papers I showed you earlier, and I glued those onto my card. And I felt like those stood out better and still offered a little bit of sparkle. Here you can also see the faint pattern in the background. This wasn't the Yupo paper piece, it was the extra ink we pulled off and it still looked nice enough to use for a watercolor looking background like you see here. Another way to use bold crazy backgrounds is to simply add a die cut sentiment, a large one, and keep the rest of the card very simple. For this one I'm using this large hello die along with the shadow. I find the shadow is really important to use when having bold backgrounds to help it stand out. See how the white shadow helps to make that blue glitter paper hello stand out? If that white shadow wasn't there, it would get lost in the background. By the way, that background is another one of the cardstock pieces that has the lifted alcohol ink from it, and I really like the look of it. I feel like some of the lifted pieces I like more than others, so I was sure to use all the ones I liked on the cards today. And I'll save the others for scraps when I do a scraps card video. And by the way, I feel like that glitter paper for that large die cut also helps to make it stand out. Okay, now if you have some backgrounds that you're not really thrilled with, you can still use them on cards. And I have a couple examples for you. For this one, I'm going to allow the colors that I like to peek through a background die. I thought this folk dance die, which has been sitting on my desk to use for a while now, was perfect because it only had little openings. I had one of my pink alcohol ink lifted pieces that I didn't really like the results of, but when I put it behind this die cut, it looks like a watercolor piece behind it, and I'm really happy with the results then. So don't give up on those pieces that you don't love. You can use them with background dies like this or the next trick I'll show you. By the way, that's that Just Because stamp set again. I like how the Just Because fits nicely with the little messages to create the perfect little sentiment on the front of a card. Okay, my last example is one that is great for using up all the little scraps that we have left over, the colorful pieces, or for backgrounds that you weren't thrilled with. Or in my case, I just have some leftover backgrounds to use and I can make multiple cards. This is the Pink Fresh Studio Lovely Frames die. This background die really worked well for this technique because it die cuts that outline of frames that you can see in the back there. And it also cuts the little pieces that you can put in the center. So I die cut the frame from white cardstock and I'm gluing it onto a white note card. I then die cut that same die from some colorful pieces of inked paper from uh, earlier in this video. And then I'm gluing those in, just die cut inlaying them into the openings. And I'm mixing and matching a bunch of different colors. This was a great way to use up those background panels that I had left, or you can use up scraps or the pieces that you really weren't happy with the results. I then added a large hello black die cut and put that on a vellum shadow die cut. So you can see how that helps to make it stand out against the busy background and how I featured a lot of different colors and a lot of different background stamps in this card design. Okay, so there you have <laughs> a fun technique and a lot of examples. I just had fun using some products that I've been wanting to use and showing you different ways to use inked backgrounds for clean card designs. If you are interested in the supplies, they're linked below in my YouTube description. And in the middle, I have a couple other alcoholic videos that I think you might like. Thanks for stopping by and for watching such a long video. I appreciate it and we'll see you soon.